Yes, the next talk is by Scott Hansen about retrobriting, a way to restore yellowed computer components back to their original color. So, yes. me, uh, do you have video? There he is. All Hello. Right. Uh, yes, video here, and then I've got uh, to share. I can find it. Um, awesome, small wonder. I, I actually have never heard of that show, but I think I might go back and uh, listen to it and watch it. Um, all right, here we go. Um, yeah, my name is Scott Hansen. Um, and this is uh, a talk on retro writing. Um, I, we had a, on the Discord there, we had a, a, a chat going, which is, was pretty good. Uh, a lot of discussion on ways to, different people to do it. Uh, we summoned the the crack uh, the retro writing kraken, Javier. So thank you for your inputs uh, and and conversation and your videos too. Uh, thank you for putting those together. Um, this is my first time attending uh, Kansas Fest. Um, just a little bit about me. I'm uh, I live in Houston. I'm married. Uh, we've got two and a half uh, two kids. Uh, one's two and a half years old. One's one year old. I've uh, been married for about four years. A um, little bit about my background, which might come into play a little bit. I'm a mechanical engineer from Texas, uh, uh, from Texas A&M. Um, I got my master's in mechanical engineering there. Um, uh, current job, I work at NASA as an engineer. Um, I work on thermal control systems, uh, specifically on the human landing system, human landing uh, system, which is being developed right now to go back to the moon. Um, and then uh, part of my work at NASA, I, I developed some condensing heat exchanger technologies, um, which is basically like your air conditioner for your spacecraft. Uh, but these ones utilize hydrogen peroxide. Um, and then I also used a, a UV ozone combination um, as a disinfectant to control microbial growth. And the hydrogen peroxide was used that too. So um, that that's kind of the key like I started learning about it at my work at NASA, and then I found out about this retrobriting process um, and kind of tying things together. Um, and uh, kind of the goal of this presentation is twofold. Um, I, one, I want, really wanted to go to the vendor fair and pr be a vendor at the vendor fair, uh, but we're virtual this year. Um, uh, so I, am, I do have a retrobrite product that I'm selling, just a forewarning. But I really wanted to make this more of a technical presentation um, and more looking at it from the standpoint of trying to expand the body of retrobriting knowledge because I've watched a lot of videos. Um, and I think there's, there's um, and I, I, I spilled the beans on the, the discord, but there's this oxidation potential, which I'll talk a little bit about, which I really think gets at the heart of what's going on in the retrobriting process. Um, and, uh, uh, also, my my first Apple experience since this is uh, an Apple conference um, or Apple focused uh, conference is my first Apple experience was um, uh, at my uncle's farm. He actually mortgaged his farm to buy uh, an Apple II computer, which was I thought was amazing. He really believed in um, the future of the computer, and he wanted his kids to learn. Uh, and so I remember going to my uncle's farm and playing like basic games on, on computers. So, uh, that was my first experience. And then how I got into retro writing, um, kind of two different ways. One, um, space shuttle, old space shuttle toy. I got as a kid in the late eighties, um, that had turned yellow. Um, and I wanted to somehow restore it and I wasn't quite sure how to do that. And then I also had a really nice set of speakers uh, that we got in the early 2000s. It still works great. Um, and I wanted to see how to brighten those. So um, that's how I got into uh, the retro writing process. Um, so I'm sure a lot of people on here know about the retro writing process um, and there's different ways to go about it. Um, but in general, uh, the retro writing is a way to restore yellow plastics back to their original colors. Um, first, you you clean and apply um, the it's a, typically a hydrogen peroxide cream that you apply or you, you dump uh, submerge the part in a hydrogen hydrogen peroxide bath. Um, you cover and expose it to to light. Some people use UV light. Some people just set it on the sun, 
and then um, you get your desired effect and then you go to uh, wash and dry that, that uh, cream or the peroxide off um, and you're left with a restored product. So um, the root causes of the yellow, yellowing, I'm not gonna spend too much time, in, time on this, partly because I'm not a polymer expert and there are a lot of theories out there. Um, I think one of the most common ones is um, that there's bromine, which is a flame retardant that um, it's naturally bone yellow in color. And um, that kind of leaches out uh, of your computer over time. And you go through a slow uh, yellowing process. I I've read a few reports that um, that may, may not actually be the very reason why uh, things yellow, um, partly due to low vapor pressure, bromine, but there's a lot of things that go on in the polymers. Um, when they're making them different bondings that go on. So that may or not, may not be, I think the Nintendo, I've read some reports from them that that's kind of their, their statement of why things yellow. Um, and also with some of the transformer toys um, and, and other toys. Um, uh, and a couple other theories is plastics picking up trace contaminants in the air and just general uh, photo de degradation and thermal de degradation um, on the computer, uh, on those computer parts. So, um, I'm sure there's other theories out there, um, but what, really what I'm interested in is, is how this retrobriting works and um, really want to try to expand the knowledge and uh, introduce uh, different concepts and, and vet them through a community. I'm by no means an expert in this area, but uh, I felt that this was one of the, the things that had been discussed by a lot of people uh, online, so uh, I thought it would be worth talking through this. Um, so the oxidation potential is basically um, there, there's um, things like atomic oxygen, which is just a single uh, oxygen atom. There's ozone, hydrogen peroxide, and these things have, um, you remember from your old chem chemistry class, there's valence electrons. It's the, the number of electrons in the, the outer shell, or outer ring. Uh, that either have uh, like a plus one or a minus one, and they're very reactive. Uh, and they don't want to stay as just like a single oxygen atom. They want to bond with, with something else um, to uh, bring them to a stable state. Uh, to, so either to get rid of that one of the electrons or add another electron to it. And they do that through the, the whole ionic covalent bonding type, type method. So, um, in looking at uh, and kind of doing a, a, a survey of the different uh, retrobriting processes out there, there's, there's things like uh, OxyClean, which is sodium uh, percarbonate, which is um, kind of, I think of it as a, um, a solid hydrogen peroxide um, uh, solution. Um, there's also UV, people just putting their products out in, or their computer parts out in light. Um, and having it work that way. UV lighting and heating also, it, it um, uh, uh, quickens, it, uh, it speeds up the process of using these other processes too. Um, there's peroxide and peroxide developers um, like your salon care products. Um, I've saw one video where um, somebody uses chlorine gas um, and then there's ozone um, uh, as well. And I just realized I'm not, Full screen, there, that's a little better. Uh, so there's air, uh, ozone. And so um, you can Google uh, oxidation potential of various chemicals and you'll, you'll get some type of chart like you see off to the right hand side there. Um, so there's oxidant, oxidants and then your electrochemical potential which is measured in, in volts. Um, so I, I kinda, you can follow the arrows um, uh, over to the right of those different things that are being utilize, utilized to retrobrite and how they, that corresponds over to this electro, uh, the electrochemical uh, potential. So basically the higher the electrochemical potential, the more reactive it is, you can think of, think of it that way. So um, things like your, your ozone uh, and your hydrogen peroxide, they're very good. Uh, they're very high oxidation potential. Uh, one of the reasons why I think a lot of people use hydrogen peroxide instead of like potassium uh, permanganate or chlorine dioxide, chlorine gas is because you get better 
um, oxidation potential one, and they're just a lot easier to use. Um, there's um, the sodium hypochlorite down there uh, as well. That is uh, basically your bleach. And so bleaching in theory would work uh, as well on, um, for retrobriting. Uh, so um, that's kind of the, the theory um, that, uh, that I'm working with. Again, I'm not an expert in this, but I think it's, it's worth considering uh, within the, the body of people that enjoy retrobriting and like retrobriting. And so uh, basically that um, uh, the higher that oxidation potential, the more reactive. So I think anything on this list would uh, really work to um, uh, um, retrobrite a solution. So um, the most common method is using the hydrogen peroxide uh, and a UV heat source. And so just looking at this a little bit closer, uh, you have your uh, H2O2 uh, that ends up breaking down into uh, H2O plus O, uh, your atomic oxygen uh, uh, element right there. And really, in actuality, there would probably be a two out here, and then you'd have a two in front of your H2O, and then also a, just an O2 um, uh, oxygen gas uh, that we're, we all know and love uh, better. And so uh, something that, that I think, too, that when you put uh, hydrogen peroxide in your creams and your, um, your creams and also your liquid, when you expose them to heat and light, um, they break down quicker. And that's why you see a lot of people doing that. Um, and that's why it's stored, hydrogen peroxide is stored in opaque bottles um, and packed with stabilizers. Um, so it doesn't break down. Um, na naturally occurring hydrogen peroxide is very, um, it breaks down very quickly. Um, uh, and so that's why you, um, uh, you store it in those opaque bottles and package it uh, with stabilizers. So, um, I think I'm op open to discussions, uh, questions here. Um, just a couple other concluding thoughts. Um, the uh, peroxide method works fantastic. Um, I am a fan of the, the, um, the, the using the creams. Um, and uh, the one thing that I've noticed though, is that, um, that you get that marbling effect um, that occurs from peroxide drying out. And so um, this is part of the, the vendor fair, I'm kind of putting on different different hat here. Um, what I've done, you can see a picture of it at the bottom. I've worked to develop a special formula uh, that's, to, uh, that's thicker than uh, typical cream developers. Um, and it really helps to prevent marbling effect by allowing thicker coating of your peroxide. And so you get more peroxide per surface area, you get faster brightening, you get more of those reactions, more of the uh, uh, taking place. Um, and you can find it on Amazon and eBay uh, on it. I'm gonna write my personal email on here too. If anybody wants to email me specific questions, uh, I'd love to, love to answer. Um, and to give you an idea here, this is the, um, the demonstration part. Uh, your typical cream developers are like this is your salon care product. Your typical cream developers are they're thicker than water, but they're still they're still pretty runny. Um, the the uh, peroxide uh, gel formula that that I've come up with is it's it's this product. It's you know it's your Dairy Queen upside down blizzard. Uh, we can do that with with this. Um, take a fork. That's what it kind of kind of looks like. So you can get pretty thick coating with this stuff. Um, we've I've done several iterations on this uh, um, this formula. It works works great. Um, it works on colored plastics as well. Um, plastics that haven't um, faded. It won't restore faded plastics, but it will restore yellow colored plastics. Um, I'm coming up with. Uh, uh, another formula that works on headlights uh, as well right now. So um, I'd, I'd be happy to um, questions. Uh, answer any questions on here. I, I, again, wanted to make it as technical as possible and not be so much of a, a the vendor, even though I, I really appreciate you 
um, and the organizers of this for allowing me to, to be on there. So, um, uh, your email in the uh, Discord chat for this because we have a couple of people want to know that your email address. If you could put that in the Discord chat. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll put it in there, and then I, I see a bunch of questions right now. I'll try to respond to them here. Um, there's, uh, I do have a website. It's retro-bright.com. I'd be happy to order internationally. I see there's an Australia. Maybe you can email me your um, uh, your address. Um, let's see. Uh, before and after pictures, I've got several on the uh, on my that website. Um, yellowing does uh, does come back. I have not figured out a way to keep it permanent, uh, unfortunately. Um, but it it does take a while for uh, uh, for it to return. All right, one minute. Yes, I did. I did retro bright that space shuttle toy. Um, let's see. I think we have it around here somewhere. My kids were playing it with this with it this morning. Um, UV light that is more effective, UV B or C. Um, I can tell you. So when I was working with UV light um, at NASA, we used we actually used 253 or 252 nanometer wavelength lights, um, and that actually broke down oxygen uh, O2 into uh, 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 individual atomic oxygen and that atomic oxygen attached to O2 to create ozone. And we were doing that in a water loop. So, um, and then I think the 172 nanometers is what we typically like using. I don't know if that falls under UVB or C. Apple. Well, yeah, time, okay. Time I think we're running out of time. So we need to uh, look at those, go to the chat and ask these other questions, which are great questions. And yeah. uh, thank you for this information. It's been great. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time.